I'm Katie Wallace, host of the Sustainable League, introducing you to the people making an impact in their own way and exploring what it really takes to evolve our consciousness and build towards a more resilient world. All right, all right. My guest today is Rock Robinson, CEO of Ecara. Ecara is a software company that licenses technology to green ride-sharing platforms. They're also an experience-driven car service company, moving people through the experiences that matter most. And not only are they providing this eco-friendly option, but they are doing it themselves and paving the way. Yep. Welcome to Sustainable League, yep. Rock. Yep, thank you for having me again. Again, yeah. This is my second no, three, three, three. You're a third three? timer. Yeah, Whoa. three times. Whoa. So we're gonna kick this off a little bit differently. I know you're probably not gonna have any problems going deep, but icebreaker, pick a number one through 365. Uh, 365. Yeah, you know the la my last guest <laughs> picked that number too? Whatever, <laughs> fine, it's a good one. Okay, cool. How would you describe your future? This is such a good question. How would you describe your future in three words? Uh, space, travel, vehicles. So you're going to be an astronaut. That's so you're going to be Elon Musk. I want to go to space. I, I tell my kids that everything, everybody thinks I'm crazy, but I tell you, everybody. You are crazy. Like, I want to go to, I want to be the guy in space driving or whatever's being driven. Whatever that is, I want to drive it. Yeah. Okay, cool. Sign me up for that. I'm down with that. That's what Ikara is going to evolve yeah. into It's going to be like the Cybertruck on space that's <laughs> i should say cyber truck space <laughs> okay cool okay we'll roll with it then yeah. awesome so i mean hopefully i did enough a good enough job introducing the car but if you want to introduce yourself maybe a little bit more and kind of just give us some insights into you and what brought you to this place to build this company yeah you know um i think uh, again my name is rock um uh, Kevin Shea and I and a few others had some ideas a few years ago about how to clean up the mobility space, right? It's it's just a mess. And I think it's been a mess for a while, not just talking about like um, an Uber and Lyft when you look at all that kind of stuff. But when you look at the taxi companies, it was still not that great of an environment for for people to work. Um, and so, so we wanted to kind of clean it up. And, and now that we're in this place of transitioning between gas and the electric is pretty exciting because I got little kids and I was looking at my daughter one day and I was like you will never ever drive a car again or again mm -hmm. ever like you will ne like she's three now she will never drive a car ever in her life and that made me think like okay let's not be let's be very smart about what we're doing and if we're gonna clean up the mobility space we gotta we got to be a model to show everybody how it's going to look going forward. And you got to at least be something like what we're doing. And I'm not saying it's got to be car or wherever people are, but you need to have consistency and you need to be customer centric stuff like that. Mm -hmm. so, so you think that that shift's coming that soon, that we're not going to, like your daughter's not going to drive a car? Or it'll absolutely. it'll become more of like a nostalgic thing, like people just drive Yeah, yeah, fun. yeah. People like, like how soon? Like, be a futurist. <laughs> Go ahead, um, tell me when is the shift taking place. Tell me when, when is the shift taking place. When, when little, like, like I think in the next decade, it's going to be the most dynamic decade of all times, like for all of us, because of all of this emerging technology. I mean, and I, and I think this decade is going to go so fast. Remember, like Uber didn't, Uber didn't exist five years or a decade ago. Neither did, neither did some of these other large companies. And so, you 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 we expedite that over the next decade and i think yeah in 2025 people are not going to want licenses unless they're going to use them to work mm -hmm. i think that's where it's going to shift i think the license is going to become the driver's license is going to become important again yeah because like if you have an accident people don't realize that you have to you know driving is a way to make money in the future mobility is changing everybody's like that's a new job. That's a new market for gig economy. To to get in a car and move people, boxes, pizza, it doesn't really matter. Right? Amazon packages. 
everything, right? And so the idea of the license, like if you get if you get hit by somebody, the insurance says you're you, you know we go through that. That's all the what time. happened to me. Exactly. Yeah, never exactly. been a wreck in my life, and some kid hit me. Exactly. Yeah. Now imagine if you had to provide for your daughter by driving. Mm-hmm. It hinders you in all these different ways. So the technology on the side of like um, the smart, like even though we don't drive an autopilot, those those Teslas are super smart. Like they engage with the traffic to help you, mm-hmm. so accidents go down. Like safety is higher, and so I think in the next five six years, nobody's getting licenses anymore. Interesting like, yeah. prediction, Rock Robinson. I mean, we are entering a new era, that's for sure. There's yeah. tons of EVs that are coming on the scene. Uh, we both threw down a couple hundred bucks for uh, the Cybertruck, Cyber Elon Cybertruck. So electrification is happening. There's no doubt about it. Um, but what should folks make of all this? Like, what are some of the problems that we're going to, maybe some of the new problems mm-hmm. that we're going to see, but also what are some of the, the good things that are going to be happening because of that? Yeah. I think you already talked about a couple, but. Yeah, you know, I think the, the problems are are just really us adopting change. I, I, as I look at it, economically, it makes sense, right? The math just makes sense. If you look at, just take away climate change for a second. Mm-hmm. It, 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 it's just a hoax. You, okay. and I, you and I avidly disagree, but let's just say it was. Just so we sheer, should also discuss that too, but yeah, we will. Just so sheer economics alone, it's just better to convert all cars to EVs. Just on economics. They last longer. They are more uh, maintenance free. The energy is cheaper. Like all of those things make up what, what this conversion is. So what that means is more money in people's pockets. Because you're not, it doesn't cost you as much to operate a vehicle in the future. So, so think about that. And um, you can buy a vehicle and put that vehicle in some type of monetized service, like Toro, for example. You know how many people are making a lot of money on Toro right now? I buy a Tesla and I'm gonna go throw it on Toro, and then if it rents out ten days out of the month, I just made a grand. Cool. Like that's how you buy a car in the future. So, sharing economy. Yeah, yeah, it's all about sharing. And, 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 exactly. Things, yeah. and the Airbnb of cars, exactly. And so when all that happens, you got production going lower, solar power being used and adapted more. We get into this place where we really always talk about. And yeah. I think that's kind of cool. Yeah, I think that's why it's kind of like people have been slow to change is because, I mean, technically right now from everything that I've been reading, the cost is relatively the same. And once everything balances out between, like, let's say electric vehicles and regular vehicles, cost is about the same. But, well, to your point, once more people start adopting it and then all these other technologies go down because more people are adopting it, then that's when we'll actually see the real significant changes. Totally. But the major changes, or the, the major reason why would be obviously environmental or health, things that are happening um, because of using these dirtier technologies. Mm-hmm. For sure. And it's clean, it's cleaner in every way. You know? Yeah. So, and I know people will talk about the batteries and, you know, the aftermath of what that looks like. And I think, you know, I think these guys are doing a really good job of trying to understand how to make batteries better in the short term. So that in the long term, we don't have to worry about all that. So I think, you know, I think it'd be fine. Yeah. I mean, it's going to create a whole new set of problems, obviously. Sure. That's what everything does. But then the whole point is, like, for companies to come on and start solving those problems exactly. that we're seeing from the cleaner technologies. Exactly. So tell us a little bit of, more about Ikara then and kind of what are the problems <laughs> that you guys are solving? Yeah, for us, like, Ikara is, is really about um, reducing emissions and advancing the adoption of electric vehicles. We've said that from the beginning. Yeah. We what does that mean to like people yeah, who yeah, yeah. like? What does that mean? Right, like, break right. it down. We plus. didn't. We didn't know all the, the whole time how all that was going to work. How are we going to get to like? How do we reduce emissions and help the adoption of EVs go up? So we thought, let's start with a rideshare company. Let's mm-hmm. do that. And when we started the rideshare company with all EVs, we thought, well, dang, there's no software. How do we how do we program uh, the things that we do and structure the algorithms we need to do what we need to do? Mm-hmm. It didn't exist. So then we thought, okay, let's start building our own code. So we build our own software. And then we realized, wow, we got a solid tool now that we can use in the city that's monetizable, that that works, that you know, controls all of these functions to get a lot of work done very, very quickly. Now we realize that 
other people in different markets can use it. Mm -hmm. And so now we can see the vision of like what that means in a sense of one, we have this uh, operatable business that now you can copy, mm -hmm. period. People say, well, well, what if you, somebody came in and did exactly what you did? That's the whole point. Mm -hmm. like, we're trying to do that. Like, yeah. We want people to copy what we're doing. So we're committed to being the support, the tools, the uh, ideals behind the future of micro fleets. Yeah. Right? So it doesn't matter if it's an old cab company and you're about to die. It going, it's not good. We can come in through sources that we have to buy entire fleets of EVs and then bring you the tools and software to make that happen from the, from the platform's perspective, just like an operating system, so it's pretty cool. Yeah, so when y'all started out though, you were just a serve, like you were just a green car service, basically. Yeah. And so <laughs> now it's kind of evolved into yeah. something much bigger than that. Well, we knew it would, we just didn't know how. Yeah. Because it was, it, it go from, it's like a like a black hole, right? So we did, we, we knew that at the end of the thing, that was nothing. We couldn't find anything. As all the searching we did, we found a few little companies. Test Loop was one of the very first ones. Those guys like the OG in the the all electric ride share business, and uh, shouts out to them. But um, the, we didn't know how we were going to get there. So I think. If you look at it like how you climb a mountain, you just gotta start making steps, right? And so we did. We just we didn't know what we're doing. We still don't know what we're doing mm -hmm. to a degree, but that's the whole point. Uh, the reason why we actually have to have a working model here is because there's so much ambiguity in this space. We're learning every single day. I mean, you know, you you help us all the time, and you can see how fast we shift in our software. Mm -hmm. In one year, we went through. Well, we got version three of our software platform out now. But each one of those versions, the three versions, had incremental changes within each three. So we've been working all year with software. It's crazy. Yeah. 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 Okay. So something. Okay. Let's just go back a little bit because I want to talk more about something that I take issue with, and mm -hmm. um, is the climate change narrative. And even like you're using verbiage like emission, carbon emissions, and things like that. And a lot of people aren't, I mean, I'm not gonna say they're not savvy to it or they haven't heard it before, but I think a lot of people are becoming very desensitized to mm -hmm. that and why it's such a big issue. So maybe we can talk, like, so why, number one, who is this for? Who's this service for? And why should people care? Why should people want to do something different? There's already, you know, all these right. other rideshare platforms that they could use, but why would they want to? Right, yeah, you know, it's about our community and it's about our environment, really. And it's for everybody. We just focus on business travel because they really produce the most carbon. And so we, we focus on that right now and that's kind of what's been our sweet spot. But honestly, you know, it's for everybody. It's not overpriced. We have boutique service, but not in a boutique in a sense of paying a premium, mm -hmm. but a boutique in the sense of, you know, small and focused. And we want to, when I say small and focused, it doesn't mean you can have a big company. It just like like I think Starbucks Reserve is is small and focused. I think Whole Foods is small and focused. So that's kind of where we see ourselves in this like um, well Starbucks is kind of a premium for coffee yeah. <laughs> reserve <laughs> anyway. But um, you get my point. Like I'm saying like this the, this uh, idea of being focused and customer centric. It still could be a big thing, but that's kind of what we ask for the community and for our environment. Yeah, well, I think even beyond that, because obviously I ride with you guys a lot, but it's like it's the experience. Like even if I didn't care about the environment or any of the things, number one, Teslas are insanely nice rides, mm -hmm. and it sure beats like getting into you know just like a Prius, like squeeze in with multiple other people. <laughs> no offense against yeah. like Prius or anything like that, yeah. but I just mean. It, like just to have a better experience and it's not that much of a difference as far as cost um, and it's not that much difference right. as far as convenience well then why not right so that's one of the big problems we have three that's one of the biggest ones and I'll tell you why the thing with uber and Lyft is like it's not uber if you will and I know we give them a big like big like you know hit in the gut a lot but uber is a software company <laughs> technically and those drivers are all owner operators and they can do whatever the hell they want that's the fundamental difference between what we are doing and what they're doing from a sense of mobility we're saying that 
uh, out of the 4 million or so users and the drivers I think they have, a portion of that can start building their own businesses with our software if they move to EV. So our goal is to like deter people from necessarily using Uber and Lyft, sorry, but give people the opportunity to use the, the platforms to build their own services and build their own revenue and not have to worry about, you know, the, the middleman. Yeah. Not even us. Mm -hmm. yeah. So there's like, well, I mean, we can talk about some of the other problems too, but like, so there's this whole tangent of things that are happening because you started this company at Serene Ride Share, now there's this software, now you're helping people create their own companies, essentially giving yeah. them the software to be able to do it. Like, that's pretty cool. And we haven't talked about the fact that you guys plant a tree every time someone rides either. That's Triple just bottom like, line. Triple it's like just line. another little yeah. happy throw in there. Yeah, you know, trees.org. This is a dope organization. I say, if you can, please go and support them. They do great work in East and West Africa, planting trees in these hedges, and then they grow food inside the hedges. And it's just like, people get to work, people get to eat, the environment gets better. It's a good thing. I think they've done somewhere over 100 million trees over the last 20 years. So good shot, a uh, big shout out to those guys. It's trees.org, trees.org. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, what was somebody else I wanted to mention? But anyway, but yeah, that's a big deal. That's mm -hmm. a big deal. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, so, okay, so talk about maybe kind of the other, what are some other problems that you were just talking about? You said, yeah, like, emissions is a big one. Yeah. Um, I don't think people realize it, but like the Uber, model the short ride model let's just take Uber out of it but the short I'm gonna summons a short ride model basically took away eight billion walking miles mm. where people used to walk like a mile like they don't do that anymore it's like you know it's just we're breeding um, so a culture of laziness. Yeah, yeah. I'm so, a part of this cycle. I downloaded Uber Eats the other day just so I can. It get may be eight million. Food. Eight million a billion. Don't quote me on billion, but it's just a lot. You've been this, quoted, so this, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, my, my research may be eight <laughs> million, but the fact is, it's a lot. All of that walking miles that we took up to drive produces more carbon. Mm -hmm. Makes. I mean, I get it. It works. It's convenient. And that's what we're all about. Mm -hmm. But that model doesn't really help and so the emissions now is even more so we're trying to come in and start, try to save um, emissions and reduce the the output by large using our software to help other, other companies and ours and then um and then and then lastly it's just about the uh the ev um uh, em embracing what in electric vehicles are and helping advance that because the only way we get to to go forward is to start doing something. And everybody's like, well, I'll wait, I'm gonna wait. You know, it, it, we've been hearing electric cars coming in 2020 and 2019, and it's like, where are they at, right? Mm -hmm. So we're trying to go in and create, for example, we got, um, we actually got accepted to be a part of this um, um, contest that creates what they call mileage purchase agreements, where you can buy a, a Tesla and you only pay for the mileage that it's used on a platform like ours. It's a win-win situation, kind of like the solar power purchase agreements, and we're mm -hmm. gonna, we gotta, you gotta help us with that. Yeah. But that program alone is just a lot of funding for people to to buy electric cars. Now, what happens for us is we get to kind of facilitate all that from the software perspective. But 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 that that advances like. Like we want to deploy 500 cars, electric cars next year, just a car. Like, and I, I see how we can do it now because mm -hmm. of things like that. Yeah, cool. So if we can do it, other companies can do it. And yeah. yeah, I think that's probably one of the biggest things that you guys stand for and like why I'm so attracted to Ecar is because it's more so about the type of world that we're all trying to build. And it's just like, yes, you're just making an impact in just this one way, but it's more so about education, right? Totally. Of EVs, but not just EVs, but of the type of life and the type of world that that stands for when people are moving around in EVs, right? right. It's a cleaner, more connected world. Right. And I think that's, that's a huge, I don't think there's anything more that a company could do, right? You less, you lessen your impact, number one, make sure that you're doing business in a mm -hmm. good way. Um, but then also um, building something that's that's bigger than just being a car service or being a software company. Yeah, yeah, no, we, you know, 
we we say sometimes we're excessively sustainable sustainable and, and we try to do everything with like the, the idea of car sharing right a part of our software is a sustainable idea that's taking one long-term use asset and using it the way it's supposed to be not to sit in the garage and mm -hmm. polish it but to move things around and keep it moving and without having to buy it right so we so that's just a sustainable play for us in that manner yeah. but also it's bigger than that it's like I decided I, I'm gonna start eating less meat you know did you well you know I've, I've, I've no, tampered, you I temper with vegan and you know but consciously I understand that I need to make changes about it and so um, you know I, 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 I do eat less meat than I used to because that's I see the big problem. Yeah. And I, and I think, like, if you look at the numbers too, let's go back to the whole problem. You know, um, CO two from cattle farming is like alarmingly high as well, <laughs> which is crazy. Mm -hmm. I didn't even know that until like five years ago. And so now I know that when we talk about things, we need to talk about more like how to, you know, recycle more and eat less meat and just be conscious of what we're doing. Yeah, of yeah. the impact. Now, is that like a direct result from building Ikara? Or has there been awesome people in your life who have like, <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> it's both. I mean, yeah. Again, like you gotta have people, right? You gotta have support. Like I got my buddy White T, shout out to White T on this. Uh, he he actually been like for years now pushing vegan and pushing he's dedicated to it and I've tried it and stopped and tried to stop but um, it's people like him and people like you who always make an impression on me and then also I just had a natural inkling like three years ago to stop eating meat with bones in it it's really weird mm -hmm. like if I get a piece of meat and it has a bone in it I'm like eh. But weirdly enough, if it's in like cubes, it's a real random thing. It's just, it's just I only eat cubed meat. <laughs> uh, okay. I'm not thinking about it as an animal. I'm thinking about it as like this piece of chewy. Protein. That's a good point, and that's something that I was just talking to someone about. Is that we are so far removed from nature and from exactly. our food and from all these things, and then if we were more conscious and more aware of of how these things come to be, then we'd probably be less out. Oh, totally. And not that I think that being vegan is the, well, I, I think right now it's the most sustainable choice, but I would love to see more sustainable, uh, like actually, not like um, meat alternatives, but like more sustainable farming practices. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Raising animals more sustainably. I mean, because you could, if you buy like local meat and things like that, like great, cool. Yeah, You're yeah. getting it from Bob's farm, cool. Yeah. yeah. I, like I'm on board for that. I'm not going to personally do it right now, but right. maybe eventually. Right. I, I, I had this vision yesterday of like, I feel like in the future, meat is going to be like this thing that you do only like special occasions. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, oh, uh, you know what? I'm going to have a steak for my birthday. You yeah. know, it's like we need to minimize. I think we got over overly like to, the hamburger culture just took off and like all that. Meat Convenient. Burn. Yeah. And so I think we just went too far. Yeah. It's for sure. hundred percent. We can see that. And it, yeah. it's wasteful. It's bad. The chemicals, the drugs on the animals to keep them alive. All that stuff is just bad. So we can survive a whole lot. Uh, we can survive better, probably live longer if we go back to like really taking uh, things that grow naturally and consuming our bodies with living things versus the dead. Yeah, so we've it. definitely, yeah, we've definitely taken convenience like way, yeah, yeah. way to the max, and now we're kind of feeling the repercussions very much so in every aspect of our lives around the world. And so it'll be interesting to see how we kind of try to move it back towards being yeah. in the middle middle road. Okay, so are there any other things that you have noticed or maybe that you've become more aware of? Like you saw, said you've been doing like meatless days and things like that, but is there any other thing, other changes that you've made in your life personally just from being involved in this work? Um, you know, yeah, absolutely. I think it's still like it just goes down to awareness. Mm -hmm. Like, um, I started buying like like clothes. Like, for example, I would buy clothes that were like like thoughts for threads or threads, threads for thoughts. With, yeah, thoughts for threads. threads for thoughts. Yeah, I started buying stuff like that because I felt like you know consciously I'm I'm noticing the the massive amounts of crap that we go that we waste mm -hmm. so it's like yeah it's, i'm making decisions like consciously to do that um i'm not even by any means professing to be this great you know sustainable person in every area but 
because of what we did, and this is the whole thing, I think you got to start somewhere, right? I think starting somewhere just kind of keeps you going. And ever since we've been doing this consciously, I've had to think through what I'm wasting and what I'm doing yes. and then and really evaluate that. Yeah. 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 I think that's cool because then the more that you do that, the more people around you start to do it. Yeah. And that's the biggest thing is that I think a lot of people still don't realize that just taking a ride with any other you know ride share service yeah. isn't just taking a ride there's a whole other like slew of problems that comes along with that same thing with just buying a shirt from just any old store yeah, i mean there's like there's chemicals that get into your skin it impacts your health it impacts you know people who made the shirt it impacts all of these different things and so i think the more that people can see that their actions aren't just you're not just doing this one thing like it really does matter and it has this resounding effect all around the world you just right. have no idea but just becoming more aware of that is is huge and i think that's very much displayed in what you're doing with ikara yeah so. you know what i did notice too when about, like, about eating i said that i would start off by eating all uh, plant-based stuff and then have meat as the last thing when i used to do the opposite Mm -hmm. I would eat all my meat. You know, when you're a kid, you eat all your meat and then you eat your vegetables last. I was that kid. Maybe you were. But I was that kid that ate my vegetables last. Oh, yeah. So when I get to my vegetables, I'm like, I'm really kind of full already because I've eaten all this meat. Mm -hmm. Now I do the opposite and I realize that I'm wasting way less food. Because then I get through my vegetables and things that are plant based and I eat a little meat and I'm like, you know what I mean? Sure. Uh, it's, I'm serious. No, that's like, great. Thank you for that sign. Because I'm telling the, I'm talking to the diehard steak eater out there. Yeah, you need yeah help, totally. Do it this get way. Get your man. vegetables first. Go eat vegetables some for like and get like good good helpings of vegetables and go for it first and watch it in the thing. You're not gonna eat as much steak. You'll start to go. Great. Yeah. That's a that's a great yeah. All you steak eaters out there. <laughs> there you go. I'm sure they're listening to this podcast. Um, okay, great, cool. Well, I think you've given us tons of information. Cool. What is, I don't want to say what's your number one piece of advice, but I think maybe what's, what's kind of like been your focus or um, how, if people are trying to make these changes or they're just interested, kind of like what's your number one piece of advice to people? That we're all wrong. Mm. That is my favorite piece of advice. We're all wrong. I yes. Think, I think if we start from a place of understanding that we're all wrong, then it opens up these opportunities for change. And I think that's where we are with people. People are sometimes so um, stuck on their ways. And it could just be because of like, for example, I was at an event Saturday, it was like a car show. And people just like addicted to the sound of horsepower. It's a real thing, you know, it's, a, it's but you know what? It could be wrong. Every time somebody's revving an engine and vroom, 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 remember you're just, basically throwing bad gas into the air for no apparent reason other than you like the sound of it. Yes. You're passing bad gas. <laughs> it's bad gas in there because you like the sound of it. And I think that's the part people don't understand. It's like, would you do that? Like if you knew that um, you, wouldn't, you wouldn't put a little child at the end of a tailpipe and go, vum, vum. you know, wouldn't do that. Because it doesn't make, that's, that's crazy. But that's in sense what we're doing when we, when we do that. We're just shooting bad gas out. But, being open-minded and then like understanding that that may not be the right thing yeah you may, you may be wrong about that um i think it could stimulate some thoughts about real horsepower which is electric horsepower <laughs> okay <laughs> no but i like that though i like that like you just remembering that you don't know anything yeah. you're yeah. not like we honestly don't i mean right? science changes pretty much daily and um, I mean, we should still go by science. I'm not saying like throw science out the window. No, but absolutely. we also have to like maintain this level of curiosity. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. not a you know, I know everything. Exactly. I know this is the right way because more than likely you're going to change and you're going to move on. Oh yeah, think about it. In a hundred years, people are going to say Ikara was the dumbest idea ever, but. <laughs> you know, people think so. Oh man, there's like right? a slew of companies that we can look at now that are just like dead. Oh, right, they're gonna be people like, loved it. For people like, love yeah. it. It's like so. You know, we're always changing, and you know, I, I, I don't. I'm not afraid to change. I, I think change is good, and I'm, I'm so committed to understanding that I'm wrong. Doesn't mean you don't do what you're supposed to do because it's it's about making some steps in the right direction. Mm -hmm. Not not that your step is the only step, and it is the all be all of steps. Um, it's just a step, and so yeah. that's my advice to people: is just be wrong, be more wrong. 
or at least understand that you could be wrong. Hell yeah. yeah. Be wrong more. Be wrong okay, more. Okay, cool. Awesome. Yeah. Well, um, thanks for jumping on with yeah. us in this wonderful, beautiful studio. Sync Lab, baby. Sync Lab Media. Yeah, very awesome. Like, like you shouldn't be podcasting like if you're not. This is real doing podcasting. Yeah, right Sync now. Lab. Yeah, I think we're going to show Gary V up with this whole thing. Oh my gosh, oh. stop. Okay, cool. All right. Gary V. The end. Thank you.